Well, good evening, Facebook Live. It has been a good, solid month since the last time I've been with you. I've been on a much needed vacation, but I'm back alive and well, ready to really engage in more conversation with you about the topics that we talk about. Now, as you know, this is the Infidelity Recovery Call. And every single week, I like to give you just a little bit more information that can assist you and guide you in the process of trying to figure out how you can recover from infidelity. So maybe you aren't that person. Maybe you've never experienced it, but I guarantee you, you know someone who has. Because when you consider the statistics in this particular country for both married and non-married couples, it is extremely high. Now, it does fluctuate. It's been said that upwards of 40% of couples have experienced infidelity, and it was a time where men were the main perpetrators of the crime, but we're finding out that women are now competing in that area as well, and so the numbers are increasing dramatically, and people are really becoming unfaithful for a variety of different reasons, and so that's not the nature of this particular session tonight, but one of the things that I've found is that a lot of times people become so enamored they become so in love, so enthralled with their partner that all they can see is the possibility of what life would be like. And so we're living in the fantasy, right? We're living in the feeling of newness and we believe that, oh my God, if I could just end the current relationship that I have, that I can enter into a blissful relationship with my affair partner and we can ride off into the sunset and live happily ever after. But even though that's Hollywood, that's movies, that's TV shows, and it looks good and it feels good and it sounds good, it's really far from the reality. Because when you consider the statistics, let's just start off with basic marriage statistics. We know that in this country, when there's no infidelity in this country, we have upwards of a 50% divorce rate. That means upwards of 50% of all couples who say I do wind up getting, wind up getting divorced. That's an alarming statistic, okay? Well, that would imply that there are an additional 50% who remain together. But even of those who remain together, the other 50%, a huge 30% of those individuals experience what we call an emotional or social divorce. That means over the course of time, they've transitioned from being soulmates to roommates to roommates. So you have 50% who are legally divorced, 30% who are emotionally or socially divorced. That's 80% of all couples who've experienced some type of divorce in their marriage. Now, that's just the first marriage. If they get remarried, the probability of, the, of divorce skyrockets to 66% for the second marriage. Now, there are many of those who had a second marriage that didn't work out and they attempted to do it again. But the statistics for third marriages, the divorce rate, 75%. And so the more you take a crack at this, thinking that it'll get better the next time over, it becomes that much more challenging in order to keep these relationships together. So these are statistics that are not specific to infidelity. But when you consider infidelity, it changes the entire equation. So our topic tonight is, can a relationship born out of infidelity last? Well, the statistics will suggest that 95% of all of the relationships that have been birthed out of a, an affair, an adulterous affair, 95% of them end in divorce. 95%. Now, for the 5% who decide to go ahead and remain married, statistics would suggest that those marriages only last into the fifth year. So it's either going to quickly divorce or divorce in upwards of the fifth year. So when you're looking at the statistics, it would suggest that one to three out of every 100 couples whose relationships were born out of an affair actually make it and are successful. So the numbers just don't work in your favor. And I know that you think that you're special. And I know that you think what you have with this particular person is special and unique. And you know what? It's sent from heaven and it's amazing. And you never think that it will ever get to uh, the realities that so many other people share based upon these statistics. But the reality is, in most cases, it does. And so the reason why so many of these divorces take place after an affair has occurred, because the issues that are unique and specific to that type of union a very, very interesting and worth discussing. Like for instance, think about it. If we cheated with our partners, with each other, and now we're in an adult relationship, well, there was a level of secrecy, there was a level of deceit, 
uh, there was a level of distrust. And so now I'm in a committed relationship with someone who I was cheating with my ex-partner with. So now there are trust issues that we both bring into the relationship because now we begin to question each other. Well, wait a minute. If you did it to me or with me, how do I know that you won't do it to me? So there's an automatic level of distrust that we have that simmers over the course of time, uh, which can really tear that relationship apart. Another thing that really makes um, uh, affair relationships so fulfilling initially is the feeling of newness. Because it's new, because it's fresh, because it's vibrant, and my relationship has become stale, and that's why I left. You know, it's become boring, and that's why I moved on to something uh, that gave me thrill and passion. But guess what? Newness, once you've been with someone for so long, that newness wears away. And so what was new and fresh and exciting all of a sudden becomes stale. And so that's why we hear that term monogamy oftentimes leads to monotony. And that same type of monotony can exist in an affair relationship if you don't know how to keep any type of relationship new. It requires skills. And the other thing is this. The foundation of the relationship that was birthed out of an affair was based upon lies. It was based upon deceit. And it was based upon sex. Now, the one thing we know about sex is that there's something called relationship developmental lag. We've talked about this in previous sessions. Now, according to relationship developmental lag, let me give you a perfect example of how this works. Think about someone that we all love. Michael Jackson, one of the greatest performers, singers, songwriters ever to walk the face of this earth. This is an individual who entered into show business at the age of five. So from five, Michael Jackson was forced to make adult decisions. He was forced to think as an adult. He was robbed of his childhood. And so that's why when he became of age, what did he do? He built a humongous palace with a zoo behind it. He loves amusement parks. He loves hanging around children. Why? Because he was robbed of his youth. And so in that sense, relationship developmental lag says a person doesn't have enough time to properly develop the way they normally should because of circumstances, situations, the type of relationships they engage in. And so when we take that example and put it within the context of a relationship, relationship developmental lag says this, when you engage in sex with someone, let's just say you've been with that person for six months but you've engaged with sex with that person month one. Well, according to relationship developmental lag, that relationship is only one month old because as soon as you took it to the next level and engaged sexually, that now became the main function, the main focus, the main form of communication between those two individuals. And so getting to know who they are, their likes, their passions, all of it's distorted now because you're so emotionally and sexually caught up in who that person is, you didn't have the right foundation for the relationship to grow the way it should have. So it actually stunts its growth. It doesn't properly develop. And so that's one of the biggest uh, uh, tricks about the affair relationship. We think we really know that person, but we really don't. And we don't have the proper building blocks and the proper foundation to make it work. And so if you are under the impression that life is going to be better, that life is going to be greater, that there's something better waiting for you on the other side, statistics would say that that's not the case at all. And it would be better if you figured out how to make your existing relationship work. Now, there are many people who've experienced an affair, right? So whether we're talking about the, uh, the hurt spouse or the offender, okay, of the affair, who've come back into the relationship, did the work that was required, and was able to restore that relationship. So the passion that they uh, lost, they regained. The love that they lost, they regained. The trust that they lost, they regained. Because they were willing to go through a proper process of recovery. Now we know that couples who attempt to do this on their own struggle. Now listen, they have the best of intentions, but the road to hell was paid with good intentions. So it's going to require more than just intentions. We know that knowledge, skill, wisdom, and understanding really are the fundamental building blocks of any successful relationship. Yes, love is important. But love won't sustain the relationship. For many people, we've stripped love down to just an emotion when it's so much more than that. But in addition to the emotion and the emotional connection that you have with someone, it is the skill set and the knowledge required to really make a relationship work. Think about a person who loves to eat. Does that mean that they know how to cook? Absolutely not. You love to eat desserts. Does that mean you know how to bake? Absolutely not. That requires knowledge and skill. So just having a passion for something will not ensure that it will work. So when you combine 
passion, love, skill, knowledge, emotion, all of these things together, then you have the formula for a successful relationship. So if you currently are in the midst of a, an affair relationship, I would highly encourage you to put it on pause, to enter back into your relationship, and to do the work that is required to restore what you once had. Every relationship goes through seasons. Every relationship has ups and downs, ebbs and flows. And when you realize that things in a relationship are cyclical, you won't look at your current situation and think that, you know what, there's no way that this thing can turn around. Let me tell you, Danielle and I, uh, we never experienced an affair in our, in, our, in our marriage, but there was a point where the love was gone. The passion was gone. The excitement was gone. And she was under the impression that there was no way that you could ever give it back, that once you lost it, it was gone forever. But because we learned new skills and new knowledge, we were able to put things in place to restore that love and passion all over again. So if this is you, and if you're struggling with, should I stay or should I go? You're vacillating back and forth. You just don't want to know what to do. Or you're so hurt by what has happened, you're not communicating about it. Your partner doesn't want to talk about it. He or she just wants to move on and not deal with the issues of the past, but it's hard for you to move forward and heal and trust again and to forgive again. If that is what you're experiencing, I would highly recommend get the help that you need. Read a book, go to a class, go to a seminar, get some counseling, get a coach, do something to restore your marriage. I think oftentimes the problem is we're so focused on the benefits of marriage that we're not focusing on the purpose for our marriage. There are the benefits and, it, and it, the purpose that we've been put together. And because we feel like we're not getting the benefits of this relationship, that's our opportunity to give up, to call it quits, to cave in, to throw in the towel, and move on to the next one, hoping to see some benefits. Well, let me tell you something. If you just have the knowledge and skill that is required, you can embrace the benefits within that relationship and then begin to transition into the purpose for your union. Many people have no clue what the purpose for their union is. This is something we're going to talk about in later sessions, but I want to let you know that wherever you are right now, there have been others that have been exactly where you are. There have been others who have experienced hurt, experienced pain, experienced infidelity, but they've lived to tell the story. And when you look at many of them today, there isn't a spot there isn't any residue from what they've gone through because they've gone through the proper recovery process. No, it's not easy. No, it doesn't happen overnight. No, by a snap of a finger, things won't turn around. It requires a level of work. And if you're willing to put in the work, you can turn your situation around. The same effort that you put into your career, the same effort that you put into your body when you go to the gym, the same effort that you put into your education, the same effort that you put into your dreams, whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish in your life is the same effort that you've got to put into your marriage. Because guess what? When you put that effort in, you will reap a harvest. It's all about sowing and reaping. And the law of sowing and reaping applies to a marriage as well. And when you put in the time, the energy, the effort, and the proper knowledge, skill, and application, anything and everything can turn around. All things are subject to change. So in my closing, this was a very short video just to get us back into the swing of things. Can a relationship be born out of infidelity last? Statistics say it cannot. So it would be in your best interest to take off these rosy colored glasses and look at the reality of what it is and realize that the true blessing that you're seeking already is in your own backyard. It's within your marriage. So listen, if you have any topics or if you have any questions that you would like me to address, please inbox us. That's what we're here for. Every single week, we have so many people inboxing us. We get great ideas of what to talk about for future weeks. So send us a message. We would love to hear from you. Also, I would encourage everybody, if you haven't gotten it yet, get the book, The Audacity of Marriage. It is a phenomenal book, 10 Principles to Lifelong Partnership. You can go on Amazon.com and get that book today on Kindle or in paperback. I love you all. Thank you for tuning in, and I will see you on next week. Good night.